So you are 15 years old and you are a car fanatic. You've played like every Need for Speed game since Underground 1 and you don't even watch a movie unless it's got the word fast, furious, or some random number in it. You are the quintessential car guy. You've been practicing all your techniques, hand braking, heel towing, rev matching, everything that is important about driving on regular roads and you are ready to get your first car. And you've been talking to your parents about it, kind of sneaking in some hints like E36 and M3. After all, E36 M3s aren't that expensive and your parents love you at least 10,000 money. So it's gonna be a great birthday. So it's your birthday, everything's perfect, everything's awesome. Sweet 16, if MTV was still making it, you would be on this show and you get the present. It looks like a ring box, about this big. Ring boxes aren't that big, not the kind I can buy. They're like, it was like this big and you open this box up and inside is a key. Now, this key looks suspiciously like the one to your mom's minivan, but you're sure it's different. You're sure it's not the minivan. It is definitely an M3. They obviously took it apart and disguised it so it would look like a Toyota key. And you run outside to see your brand new 1999 Toyota Corolla. It's not the car you wanted. In fact, it's not the car anyone has literally ever wanted, but it's the car that you need and your parents know that. They picked this baby up for 600 bucks. Insurance is like a dollar a month and it's gonna run forever. It's a Toyota, but it smells a little bit like cats inside. It's ugly to look at and well, it's a little bit disappointing just in all aspects, but it is yours and you're an optimist. So you begin to Google, Google things like ways to make an uncool car cool or how to make my Corolla fast or uh, how to lower a car for free. Well, before you do any of those things, I did them and none of them are good. Let me appeal to a different mod that you probably have never even thought of. I think you should paint it. So you don't have to know much about cars to know that getting them painted is crazy expensive. Body shops are a lot like doctor's offices. You can't afford to go unless you got an insurance claim. And that's the way cars work. That's why you don't see any of these cars rolling out of body shops with fresh paint jobs because it's worth way more than the car's worth. In fact, you wouldn't even go get a quote, but I did and it would be $3,500. Now, that doesn't include the door jams, that doesn't include under the hood, that is just to spray and bodywork the car. $3,500. If I want the rest done, it's gonna be closer to five grand. That's at a pro body shop. I can go down the road to this guy that paints cars in his garage and he'll do it for a mere $1,500. But remember, you're in high school and you do not have $1,500 to pour into your $600 car. Now, I have a solution today to help you paint your car for $60. That includes the tools that you're gonna need. I think all in, we may end up coming to around $100 just to get everything kind of dialed in and right. But that is still well within reason for anyone who maybe owns a $600 car, specifically if you're in high school, and have, well, a decent amount of time. So the reason I say we may end up spending $100 is because this hood is smashed. It's like somebody got hit or sat on it really hard. I don't know, but it's just kind of ruined and it would, It'd be really difficult to fix, honestly. So I have found another hood for $40, it's about an hour and a half away, so I think I'm gonna go get it and just throw that on here, but that's another $40 to our budget. Um, but overall, this car's in really good shape. It's a Toyota, it runs, it works, everything works fine, and you know, it's not that bad. It stinks inside, which is pretty typical of any $600 car, and the paint is awful, which is also really typical of any $600 car that runs. So we're gonna fix both of those things. But I was anxious to go ahead and start working on this, so we're not gonna do anything with the hood, and we're gonna start prepping the rest of the body for paint. Today's video was made possible by Avalon King Ceramic Coating. Now, you may have seen ceramic coatings going on things like Ferraris, Lamborghinis, other high-end cars, and that's because professional ceramic coatings cost like $1,000 to be installed. But Avalon King has changed the game by developing a ceramic coating that you can do in your garage, and honestly, it's easier than waxing your car. So why even use a ceramic coating in the first place? Well, paint is somewhat porous, and so as you drive around, dirt, bugs, mud, grime, and even minerals from water can embed themselves 
into your paint. It leaves a very rough finish on your paint. It also tarnishes the color and makes the car really hard to wash. So you use things like wax to kind of give this sacrificial barrier that will keep things from sticking to the paint. Well, ceramic coating is like a very, very hard wax. It's gonna last way longer than wax ever thought about lasting, and it is extremely hydrophobic, meaning anything that touches it, especially things that are water-based, which is what makes your car look dirty in the first place, are just gonna run away. I mean, they're gonna get off of that paint as fast as possible. Now you can put Avalon King on everything from your paint to your headlights to your plastic trim, anything you don't want to get dirty. And the beauty of it is that dirt and grime are not going to stick to your paint anymore. And when you're ready to wash the car, you just hose it down and that stuff literally runs away. Now this stuff is very amazing. I've never used it before until this video and it really is awesome. Avalon King has given Built viewers a discount code. So if you type Built25 at your checkout, you're going to get $25 off your purchase. If you ever wanted to try ceramic coating, now would be a great time to do it. Thank you so much Avalon King for supporting this video, for supporting Built. I'm going to leave a link to their website and their Instagram in the description below. Go check out their product and go to their most recent Instagram post and let them know that you saw them on Built. Let's get back to it. Alright, so about two, maybe no, probably like an hour and a half of sanding and this thing is feeling really smooth and looking a lot better. The hood, I'm not going to touch, so we'll have like a comparison of what the car looked like before and what it looks like now. But we smoothed everything out. This thing stunk. I mean, it smelled really, really bad. A lot of that smell was on the back, was on the outside of the car, but some of it's on the inside too and it seems like it's coming from the trunk. So I'm going to go open the trunk up and just see what's inside. It's like a very strong like animal urine smell, which normally means cats or mice. That is just like standing water. What do they do about this? Oh, that is disgusting. Okay, this is gonna be gross. Ugh. All right, so the car is totally sanded. We got the trunk emptied out. Um, that's got to be the smell. It is just awful. Basically, water had gotten into the trunk and just sat for who who knows how long. Become stagnant. There was bacteria living in it. It looks a lot like a what do you call those things in the ground? Oh, septic tank. If you ever opened a septic tank, that's what it looked like. Not good. So anyway. We drained that out. I've been washing it out of my driveway ever since. And uh, I'm hoping that's gonna smell a bit better. I poured a bunch of bleach in the back, so hopefully it'll just smell like a swimming pool and not like a cesspool. <laughs> and uh, we'll see. Either way though, the car is ready and prepped. We're gonna use this to strip off all the oils and wax from the car and all the dust that we just created. Uh, then we'll mask it kind of lightly because of the method we're using. My children are... My children are playing. Um, but we'll mask it off and it'll be clean and ready for paint. You know, one, one second, we'll, we'll be back. So I went ahead and took a lot of time to dry the whole thing off just with air. I didn't touch it at all. And uh, it's gonna sit for about an hour, I hope. I'm gonna try to get these dudes to go to sleep so that I can have some time to paint this on my own without them trying to uh, touch it. <laughs> so um, hopefully I get them to nap, and then while they're napping, I'll come back out and put some paint on this thing. So far, so good. couldn't get the kids to sleep yesterday so I didn't get to paint it um, so I came out this morning and wiped the whole thing down with acetone and it's ready to go um, I'm going to be using this oil-based paint 
Uh, it's made by Rust-Oleum. I think you can use probably any, but this is the one I've used before. Uh, they make a bunch of different colors. Now, the reason you use oil base, I think, is because one, it's crazy durable, like it, it dries really, really hard, and it dries really, really slow. And if you're rolling paint on, you want a slow drying paint, because as it dries, it's gonna continue to level and level and level, so you get a pretty flat finish. Now, last time I did this, I thinned this stuff down to about the consistency of milk, which is basically what you would do if you're gonna be spraying it. Um, I'm not gonna do that this time, because it takes tons of coats, and you have to wait like six hours between coats and stuff, it's just crazy. Um, it took really, really long, and I don't want to do that this time. I want to try this out with just the full thickness of the paint. I may thin it down a little bit. You just thin it with acetone, um, but I'm going to try it at just its regular thickness and see if we can get a good finish in less time. You also use these cabinet rollers. You can get them at any home improvement store. All right, let's do it. So I mentioned the self-leveling aspect of this paint. This is the paint I just put on. You can see this orange peel. It's pretty intense. If you come up here to the roof, it's been drying the longest. You can see the orange peel is way less intense. You see my hand's reflection in there. So this stuff does level really well. Now it's obviously not, it's, it looks like orange peel. I'm going to do another coat. I really wanted to do three, but I just read that the recoat time is 24 hours. So <laughs> I thought I was going to be able to do like all three coats today and uh, it's not going to work that way. So I've got to let this thing sit for a full day and then come back tomorrow. Hopefully it's not raining and coat it again. But other than that, it was very, very easy. I guess I'll see you guys in 24 hours. All right, so ignore the surgery that's going on in the hood, and this is a $60 paint job. So this thing is completely black. We've restored the color, and it looks pretty good, but it doesn't look like a factory paint job or a paint job you would do out of a spray gun. There's a little bit too much orange peel, and it's kind of rough. If you wanted to stop here, you totally could, but we're gonna take it a step further, which is gonna bump up our cost a little bit. So it's $60 so far to get it painted here. We're gonna add basically another $60 to get it to the next level. Now, what that means is we're gonna need a buffer, some buffing pads, and some sandpaper. So what I am impressed with is the strength of this paint. I've already tested this method out to try to get a good process that works. Normally when I would wet sand a car, I would start with a thousand grit. Today we're gonna start with four, it's not on this paper. <laughs> anyway, this is 400 grit. So it's very, very, it's the same, basically the same grit we sanded before we put the paint on. And we're gonna use that to get out the majority of this dirt and texture on the paint. So now that we're done with the 400, we're gonna go over the entire thing with 600. Now, you may be able to see it in the camera, but I burned through the paint a little bit right here, and it's just because this is too thin. I really should put another coat on. I didn't realize that until obviously I started sanding, but this is also gonna give us an opportunity to try to touch this up and fix it and see if it's gonna be easily repairable um, when it does get scratches or whatever chips in it. I think it will be. So next we're gonna hit this thing with 800 and now the texture of the paint should feel a lot more like it came out of like a spray can or a gun and a lot less like it came off of a roller. Now you notice I'm only sanding up here, I'm leaving this down here orange peeled and that's because on a lot of 90s cars like this one and the Miata, they would leave orange peel on the bottom, build the paint up a little bit thicker so it was stronger. So that'll make this thing look a little bit more OEM um, when it's all said and done.
This is a random orbital buffer, so it spins this way, and then it also spins like this. This was $120 at Harbor Freight, and that's a cheap one. Um, I've been holding off on getting one of these, but my old buffer just wasn't cutting it for me anymore. This is my old buffer. I got this for 30 bucks when I was 15 years old. I'm 29 now, I'll let you do the math. It has served me really well. Okay, you're 29 too? Okay. All right. So you can definitely do it with a cheaper single uh, rotation buffer or single orbital buffer if you want to call it that. Um, I'm just now getting to a point, because I'm doing this a lot more, where I can Daddy, notice... What? That is not coming on. <laughs> it's not coming on, no. Not yet. i got to plug it in. It's not plugged in. I'm just now getting to a point where I can notice the difference and I really need something. I need a tool that's going to give me a better this finish. Is yeah. So, I think this is going to do it. I got a few pads for finishing that as well. We sanded this thing to 3,000 grits. If you look behind me, it's starting to get a little bit of the reflection back. 3,000 is kind of overkill, but the more you sand, the less you have to buff, and I don't like buffing. So, I went up to 3,000. We're going to buff this thing out. It should look pretty good. You ready? Mm -hmm. All right. That is gross. Ugh. All right, let's clean up. So, so far we have spent around $100 on this paint job, and if you count the cost of the buffer, like if you had to buy your own buffer, then we are at $220. So that's pretty good for where we're at now. This car has come a long, long way for $220 worth of work, but there is a stage Three. One second. Now, you might have guessed this one by today's sponsor, but stage three is going to be a DIY ceramic coating. Now, ceramic coatings are fairly new. It's basically a really, really hard protectant for your car. They're extremely hydrophobic, which basically means water won't stick to them, liquids won't stick to them, everything will just wash right off, which means washing your car is a lot easier, dirt doesn't want to stick and embed into the paint, and it'll keep your car looking newer longer. And since this is a single stage Rust-Oleum paint job, I felt like adding a ceramic coating would add a little bit of gloss to the mix as well as keeping it looking this good really for the rest of the life of the car, or at least until we wanted to add another coating to it. Compared to your professional systems that cost $1,000, it's a fraction of the cost. So this is the overkill stage. This is the, if you really want to go all out stage, we're going to ceramic coat this car. We've already buffed this thing. We've cleaned it and we've wiped the entire thing down with wax and grease remover. So this car is very, very clean. So this is the actual ceramic kit. I'm not gonna go over a full DIY here because they have a really great video on their channel that uh, shows you how to do it all. Um, but I am going to do it here and we'll see how good it works. This is the bottle of coating. It is a small bottle, but you don't need much to do the car. They give you a microfiber, some gloves, an application sponge, basically everything you need to put this on. And like I said, I would do a video on this, but theirs is way better. So I'll link it in the description below. If you do end up getting this, go check that out, or if you're more interested in the process. But we're gonna do it on this car, and uh, I don't know, we'll see if it's all that it's cracked up to be.
All right, so I waited 48 hours for the Avalon King ceramic coating to cure, and it's completely done now. While it was curing, I went ahead and put on some hubcaps. I finished up the interior because when I got the car, the handles were missing. A bunch of the interior trim was missing. It was just kind of in pieces, so I put all of that back on. I replaced a mirror, just kind of tidied up the rest of the car, and this thing's done, and honestly... It looks really great. It doesn't even look like the same car. And the body's really not in that bad of shape. Now the hood that I fixed is not great and it could probably use a replacement hood, but for what it is, I'm really happy with it. Now the big question is, for a lot of you guys that watch the channel, you know that I paint cars like with a spray gun and you know your conventional paint and all that stuff. Is this comparable to that? And I think the short answer is no, um, but I don't think that makes it a bad option. Now, for me to paint a car, I have to have a HVLP gun. You gotta have a big compressor. I've got a building that I built just for painting in. I've got a ventilation system, and that stuff does cost thousands of dollars. So if you just gotta paint one car, it doesn't make sense to spend that kind of money just to do one car. So if you've got a car like this that's kind of cheap and you just want to make it look a little bit nicer, I think this is a viable option. It takes no special skill. It's very easy to roll the paint on. Sanding and buffing takes a little bit of skill, but you can totally learn that and figure that out. There's tons of videos on YouTube that make it really easy, and that's what I did to get this result. And uh, you really can get a pretty decent looking result out of it. The ceramic coating especially brought some depth to the paint after buffing and everything. It just really made it look super nice and it's going to stay looking nice because ceramic coating is like a hard wax it creates like a water barrier so that stuff that you spill on the car when it runs through mud or gets rained on it'll just fall right off and you don't have to worry about dirt ingraining itself into the paint now something to note if you are going to try this this oil paint does not like urethane which is what normal cars are painted with and so if you're going to repaint this car with a urethane paint like an actual automotive paint you've got to strip all of the oil paint off now if you're doing this you're probably not considering painting your car with a urethane paint but I think it's something good to know overall I am super happy with how this car came out I really I mean honestly I love I love the result it did take a lot more work than I was expecting to get here but it's totally doable. I did it outside. I never took this into a shop. It's just been done in my driveway. So I think for the average person, this is a perfect option for painting that old bucket that you've got at your house. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know some of you are probably wondering why we're doing this video. Why did I even spend any time on this car? Well, we will answer that question in the next video on this car. I think you guys are really going to love it. So this project was really, really fun, and I'm, I'm honestly proud of this result. Let me know in the comments below if you can think of different ways I could try to paint a car and uh, get professional results with just totally unconventional methods. Hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Thank you for watching this video all the way to the end. It makes a huge difference and we will see you in the next one.